The Luigi's Mansion games will always hold a special place in my heart because the original was the game that got me so into Luigi as a character in the first place, and my love for this goofy green plumber has never wavered once since then. He wasn't the sole reason these games stuck out to me so much though, the other big reason was the vast variety of boss ghosts that came with these games. Not so much with Dark Moon compared to the other two titles, but it still had a little going for it. From their backstories to before they died to their origins of their names, I'm going to be explaining every single portrait or boss ghost from the Luigi's Mansion game series. But before I get into these spooky spectacles, don't be a stranger to hitting that subscribe button with the notifications turned on for more Nintendo-related content like this in the future. First up is Neville, a 42-year-old ghost who likes spending his time reading books in the study of the original mansion, notably wanting to read everything he missed out on while he was still alive. Catching him doesn't require too much effort for Luigi either, all he has to do is wait for him to take a big yawn which allows for a flashlight stun opportunity. His wife Lydia, age 34, is located down the hallway in the master bedroom where she likes to spend her time fixing up her appearance in the mirror. Getting her stunned requires Luigi to move the curtains on the bedroom window that will trigger a big gust of wind into the room. Catching this couple in succession gives you access to the big boss of the game's first area, Chauncey, a one-year-old baby ghost who, according to Neville's diary, is very skilled at scaring people. To properly fight him, Luigi must rock the horse in the corner of the room to wake him up, then hit him in the face with a ball, which then unlocks the main boss arena. Because Chauncey is an area boss, catching him in one fell swoop is impossible. Chauncey has three basic attacks. One where he'll summon a giant rocking horse to shoot at you, a ball barrage attack that leaves one at the end which is required for stunning, and a belly hop attack which you'll use right after he shakes free of Luigi's poltergust. Defeating Chauncey as well as the other core area bosses allows Luigi to access more areas of the mansion and turn the ghosts he's already caught into paintings. The frames of these paintings depending on how well you did in your catching process. A gold frame for a normal boss ghost will be given if a big pearl is dropped while catching them, which is the same as draining at least 90% of their 100 HP total in one suck. Silver if you drain anywhere between 50 and 80% in the first suck, and bronze is anything less than that. As for the area bosses, it's determined by how much HP Luigi has at the end of the fight. If he has 90 or more, you get gold, 89 to 60 is silver, and anything below 60 will be bronze. The first ghosts of area 2 are the floating Whirlindas, a pair of ballroom dancers that are so attached to the hip that they share one HP bar. The guy is 34 and the woman is 30, both of whom used to be local waltz champions. Unfortunately, they can't compete anymore because they're ghosts. Catching them is a bit of a process for Luigi because first he'll need to clear out the room of the Shy Guy ghosts, then wait for the Whirlindas to finish their dance while looking away from them. The indicator of them being finished is hearing the guy yell, <laughs> They are followed by Shivers the Wandering Butler, a 72-year-old who's known for constantly wandering around the mansion in hopes of finding his master's will, hoping he's even in it. Luigi isn't allowed to catch Shivers until gaining the ability to shoot fire from the poltergust though, but once that's taken care of, he needs to simply light the set of floating candles in the hallway that'll send Shivers on a wild goose chase through several rooms. He'll eventually calm down in the butler's room, giving Luigi the chance to properly catch him. Melody Pianissima is up next. Personally, one of my favorite bosses due to all the easter eggs to old Mario games in her conservatory. Her name is very fitting for her character too, with her first name obviously being the term for the main line in a musical composition, and her last name deriving from the word Pianissimo, which is a musical notation meaning to play very softly. So her name essentially translates to very soft melody. To even reveal her location, Luigi has to activate all the instruments in the room which, when all playing at the same time, will form a remix of the original Super Mario Bros. theme. After this, she'll play a tune that you have to guess the name of, the answer is either being the underwater theme from Super Mario Bros. 1, or the main level theme from Super Mario Bros. 3. This will prompt Melody to have Luigi do battle with her actual music sheets. Sucking all of those up will allow her for capture. Also, fun fact, apparently Shivers has a crush on Melody, but she never returns his affection, and rightfully so, because she's 26 and uh, he's 72, so... Kind of a yikes age difference right there, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> After Melody comes Mr. Lugs, a 30-year-old glutton ghost who resides in the mansion's dining room. This guy loves food so much, he literally ate himself to death. Catching him is also a bit of a process because it requires Luigi to light the candles at the table and catch the waiters that bring him the food first. Then Luigi has to suck the food off his plate, making Mr. Lugs angry, which then has you sitting through a pretty long section of him shooting fireballs at you until he gets tired. Only then are you able to capture this big guy. Luigi will soon be led outside the mansion where he'd come into contact with Spooky, the four-year-old dog ghost. Spooky is very aggressive and tries to bite Luigi. The only way to stop this is to catch a skeleton ghost that'll drop a bone to distract Spooky from Luigi, allowing for a fairly easy capture. Now for the last of the Area 2 ghosts is Bogmire, serving as the main boss for the area. Bogmire has no known age and is said to be the product of the mansion's fear and despair, implying he may have been created by King Boo for the sole purpose to protect the mansion, unlike the rest of the portrait ghosts who seem to have previous lives before. In battle, Bogmire prefers to let the shadows he 
he casts do all the work for him while his real body teleports to safe locations in the graveyard. Luigi must capture one of his shadows to shoot back at the real Bogmire in order to get any sucking going. Bogmire can be a bit annoying to not take damage from while sucking because he'll actually veer his body into the shadow clone so Luigi will have to get off him. On to the Area 3 ghosts. Biff Atlas, the bodybuilder, is a 26-year-old Chad that spends all his time in the rec room. Biff's name serving his personality well just like Melody with the word Biff being a slang word to hit someone and Atlas, the name of a titan from Greek mythology who was punished by Zeus to hold up the sky. Luigi must use the punching bags in the rec room three times on Biff's body to allow for capture. Miss Petunia, age 20, is a former ghost pageant runner-up from six years ago, but apparently hasn't done much modeling work since then, which likely resulted in her gaining all that weight. Beating her requires Luigi to use the ice element power, which he can get after clearing out the tea room ghosts. Slim Bankshot is another one of my personal favorites from the first game. Dubbed the Lonely Pool Shark, this 29-year-old ghost is apparently a legend in competitive pool, but never played a living soul. His name being a combination of Slim, a way to describe one's physical stature with him being a skinny ghost and all, as well as Bankshot being a pool term where a player hits the cue ball against the railing before striking another ball into a pocket. Catching Slim requires Luigi to hit him three different times with a pool ball after he knocks them all around the room. The twin brothers, Henry and Orville, are the oldest children of Neville and Lydia and the older brothers of Baby Chauncey. Being five years old each, they love to play games like hide and seek, which is what they request of Luigi after he reveals their appearance. They hide in boxes throughout the room which can reveal who's inside if the box shakes while being sucked on by the poltergust. After accusing Luigi of cheating, the two boys get inside their trusty car and airplane, which Luigi has to destroy before he can capture one of them. Orville is the one that matters the most for the frame rank since he drops the pearls. Nana is the 76-year-old scarf-knitting granny, who potentially serves as either the mother to Neville or Lydia, and being the grandmother to Henry Orville or Chauncey, with the evidence being that defeating her gains you the key to Henry and Orville's room. To defeat her, you have to knock over her yarn balls and then shoot the yarn balls out of three different times, but if she hits you while you're doing this, you have to leave the room and re-enter. Now for Madame Clairvoya, the 52-year-old fortune teller. She's an interesting one because she's the only portrait ghost in the game that tries to be an ally to Luigi rather than blatantly get in his way. Her close connection to the spirit world allows her to see up to 49 days into the future. Her name also being a pun of the word clairvoyance, referring to the ability to see into the future, of course. Although she's met during Luigi's adventures in Area 2, she cannot be caught until towards the end of Area 3, because Luigi needs to bring her five of Mario's belongings that have been scattered throughout the mansion first. Those being his hat, glove, shoe, letter, and star. Bringing her all these items will not only give Luigi more information about Mario's whereabouts, but will allow you to capture her. She essentially gives herself up willingly too, so getting a gold on her is incredibly easy in my opinion. The Area 3 big boss is Bulasis, and he's the core reason all the other portrait ghosts are even out of their paintings in the first place. Egad had captured all of them, including Bulasis, at some point in the past, which greatly angered King Boo. So he ordered an assault on Egad's lab that freed Bulasis and all the other portrait ghosts in the process. Bulasis Colossus is a giant boo that is made up of 15 smaller boos. Defeating it has Luigi forcing it to pop through one of the Pegasus statues, then freezing all the small boos so we can actually catch them. This gets harder to do the further into the fight though, because the boos will actually become afraid of the ice, so Luigi needs to be sneaky with it. On to the last area of the game, Area 4, leading off with Uncle Grimly, aka the Hermit of Darkness. Loving the dark so much has him keeping it to himself for the most part, which doesn't bother the rest of the family all too much anyway. He's located in the closet room that Luigi had been in, in Area 1, only showing up there after the mansion loses power. Luigi just has to look away from him for a little while for him to be captured. It's also implied that Grimly may be the older brother to either Neville or Lydia since he's 45 and spawns in an area close to the rest of that immediate family of ghosts. The Clockwork Soldiers are the only portrait ghosts in the game that work as a trio. Located in the Clockwork Room, Luigi must turn on all the clocks in the room to get these guys to move from their posts, at which point they will try to shoot Luigi with their toy muskets. The only way to stop their onslaught being to suck off the wind-up keys on their backs. The purple soldier being the main one to worry about when it comes to frame rank, so it's recommended to catch him last. Sue P, the dozing seven-year-old girl, is found in the guest room, a room that is completely upside down with the exception of Luigi himself. With Sue P being such a heavy sleeper, Luigi must spray her with water to make her wake up, making her think she wet the bed. Catching her can be a little annoying due to the clown dolls that follow you around while mid-suck, as Sue P's name is an automatopoeia for someone sleeping, and some have speculated she may be the older sister to Henry, Orville, and Chauncey due to their similar looks, but at the same time, it's odd that she she'd be so far away from her immediate family's location in the mansion if that was the case. Jarvis, the jar collector, is a 45-year-old severed head ghost that loves jars so much, he lives inside him. Upon entering his ceramic studio, 
though, he will challenge Luigi to a game where if he can hit Jarvis seven times with an Ice Blast, he'll fight you. Jarvis abides by these rules and allows for capture right after the game is over. However, he does go out swinging quite a bit, with some of the jars in the studio flying towards Luigi during the suction process. Sir Weston, the Chili Climber, is a 30-year-old ghost who resides in the mansion's cold storage room. The key to beating him is fire. Luigi has to light the campfires around his body first to trigger the battle phase, where Weston will shoot spikes of ice at you from the ground, requiring Luigi to melt his ice prison completely to allow for capture. This guy is notorious for being extremely hard to get a gold frame on due to the slippery terrain in the room as well as the icicles that can fall on Luigi's head at random. Last but not least, Vincent Van Gore, the 59-year-old painter that resides in the artist studio. This guy is the one that's responsible for the existence of all the fodder ghosts that appear throughout varying rooms in the mansion. Defeating him requires Luigi to go through a gauntlet of catching three of each type of ghosts he's created to block Luigi throughout the journey. His name is a clear reference to the real-world artist, Vincent Van Gogh, responsible for paintings like the 1889 Starry Night. Now to make our way into the next installment of the series, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Like I mentioned before, this game didn't have a whole lot of unique ghosts, so this part of the video won't take too long. With the exception of the Possessors, the only other truly unique boss ghosts in this game were the three sisters, named Lucinda, Belinda, and Herlinda. Herlinda being the big purple ghost with 150 HP, Berlinda, the skinny green one with 100, and Lucinda, the small yellow one with 50. Their strategy is to twirl around Luigi holding mirrors in front of their faces, Luigi only being able to stun one of them with the stroll bulb if one of them waves at Luigi and moves the mirror. But even while trying to catch one of them, the other two or one will try to attack you to save their sister. The first mansion boss is the grouchy possessor in gloomy manner and takes over the body of a spider, forcing Luigi to undergo various puzzles to light the spider's web on fire to force the possessor out into the open. Repeating this three times will grant Luigi the dark moon piece and turn the spider back to normal. The harsh possessor of Haunted Towers possesses a set of stairs for Luigi to fight, mainly trying to shoot Luigi with blasts of fire or jump on him from high heights. The high jump is where it'll be vulnerable for Luigi to force the possessor out, granting him the Dark Moon piece after the Magic 3 process. The overset possessor of the old clockworks does things a little bit differently. It'll possess the giant clock there, but has Luigi undergo a similar gauntlet like in the Vincent Van Gogh fight, where he has to keep fighting groups of ghosts before he can fight the possessor. The possessor will only come out when the hour hand is on 4, 8, and 12. The shrewd possessor of the secret mine will possess a giant block of ice, giving it a face and everything, essentially turning into an ice monster. This is another unique fight in the sense that it's the only fight where Luigi is put into a first-person mode. He'll need to shoot bombs at the monster to break its ice shield, then shoot a bomb into its mouth when the shield is broken. Only then can he start to capture the possessor. The shield will get stronger each time, too, requiring extra hits to take it down than the previous time. Bulasis, or maybe the Big Boo, not 100% sure, makes a return in this game, serving as sort of a mini-boss in the last area of the game. The fight following somewhat of a similar pattern to the original game, where you have to pop the giant boo to reveal the smaller boos, only this time it's on the tip of a train rather than a statue. Luigi has to shoot them into cages on the train's back to beat them, rather than suck them up to. Which, man, aiming for some of those in there while the train moves can be a pain in the ass. At least it was for me when the game first came out. Finally, we have the Tough Possessor, the boss that holds the final piece to the Dark Moon. This possessor starts off by just taking over the body of a suit of armor which Luigi can easily take down, but it will eventually start to clone itself into more and more forms, forcing Luigi to take down three suits of armor, followed by one giant one. Though if you keep following the pattern of slipping the rug from under their feet, it's not as hard as it might look. Now time for the Luigi's Mansion 3 bosses. Kicking it off with the steward. This guy was briefly seen at the start of the game disguised as a human to help give the impression the hotel was nothing but smiles, though he's later seen in the basement in his ghost form. During his fight with Luigi, he'll throw people's luggage at him before being allowed to suck him in, and he's got 250 HP. Cambria is the hotel maid that sends Luigi on a wild goose chase after eating Egad's briefcase. Luigi will have to use the plumber shot on the briefcase to initiate a slam attack on her for big damage, and she's got 180 HP. Cruller is a mall cop ghost with 250 HP that overlooks the hotel shops on the third floor. He's the only boss in the game that has to be beaten with only Guiji. Guiji must suck off his sunglasses to stun him though, but he's got to be careful when doing so too because the water from Cruller's squirt gun spells disaster for Guiji's body. Chef Souffle is a chef ghost with 350 HP located in the mezzanine. Souffle, of course, being a baked egg dish that French chefs specialize in. The only way to beat him is to take away his frying pan that he uses as a weapon. Luigi must use his plunger shots in order to do this. The fish the chef tosses out can stun him as well if you want to go about it that way, but I prefer the former. Amadeus Wolfgeist is the first big boss of the game, being one of the five boss ghosts to guard a painting that has one of Luigi's family inside. Sporting a whopping 450 HP and located on the fourth floor concert hall, this pianist clearly took inspiration from the famous composer Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, with the Geist in the name being there to match him being a ghost, since Poltergeist is a synonym for the word ghost. This fight, like the other boss ghosts that will be mentioned shortly, has three phases to it. First, he will play his magical piano to launch the C 
seats in the audience of Luigi, followed by sending out several fodder ghosts in ballerina attire. Defeating them causes Amadeus to go on a rampage, possessing his own piano to use as a weapon against Luigi. Luigi will have to shoot a bomb inside the piano, then smash it to reveal Amadeus. Rinse and repeat three times to save the first toad. Luigi will then make his way to floor number six, Castle McFrights, where the boss, King McFrights, awaits him. Luigi has to fight this ghost in a bit of a traditional jousting manner, although Luigi doesn't have a horse or armor of his own, all he has to do is flash the king at the right moment to stun him, allowing Luigi to use the plunger shot to break away at the armor. Once the armor is gone, McFrights will be forced to fight Luigi using only his sword. Wetting out that sword attack gives Luigi the chance to suck away at his somewhat low 200 HP stat. Dr. Potter is the ghost that overlooks the garden suites on the seventh floor. To beat him, Luigi has to get rid of his main Venus flytrap weapon first, with the help of the saw blade found on the ground. But the plant has to be baited into eating a giant squash first, only then can Luigi get the chance to stun Dr. Potter and whittle down his 300 HP. Director Morty or Ghostzilla are the bosses found on the eighth floor, Paranormal Productions. Ghostzilla is just a goob in disguise, but this disguise gives him much more power than the average ghost. He can shoot balls of fire as well as giant energy blasts, which Luigi needs to blow back at him away to eventually whittle down the costume. And at some point, Guigi needs to help because of how powerful the blasts get. Morty, on the other hand, doesn't really fight you like that, it being the only boss ghost who straight up gives you an elevator button without directly fighting you. However, you can still catch Morty if you want to inside his director's room, where he only has 20 HP and puts up hardly any fight. Oog serves as the second painting boss. Located on the ninth floor Unnatural History Museum with 400 HP, this caveman does not mess around. The fight opens with him already possessing an object, specifically a set of T-Rex bones. Luigi will have to use a combination of firing giant eggs and other bones from varying exhibits to force Oog out of there. Once outside, Oog will try to hit Luigi with a bone club, being stunnable if Luigi is able to dodge his giant slam attack. After rescuing the second toad, Luigi will make his way to the lowest part of the hotel, B2 slash The Boiler Works. The area that has the best theme in the game, no question. The overlooker of this area is Clem the Mechanic Ghost. This guy has 350 HP and will force Luigi into a pool floaty duel in order to capture him. Luigi will need to wait until Clem makes himself dizzy to shoot his float into the spikes, knocking him out of the pool to catch. A lot of people are not a fan of this fight due to how wonky the controls can be along with the landmines he'll add into the mix the weaker he gets. Serpsy serves as the 10th floor boss of the Tomb Suites. Although only having 300 HP, this boss kicked my ass during my first playthrough in 2019. Sucking up the sand to reveal her weakness should feel so Simple enough, but I didn't realize how long you would need to do that before she actually comes out. Plus, those sand fists and snakes were not enjoyable to deal with. <laughs> Nikki, Lindsay, and Ginny are the boss ghosts for the Twisted Suites on the 11th floor, each of them having 100 HP and really having you test your eyesight to beat them. They'll hide inside their hats and spin around Luigi to ambush him, which you can stop by just using the burst at the right time. Getting rid of the first one is easy, but that doesn't stop the other ones from putting a bomb inside the previous hat. Picking the wrong one means a bomb to the face and starting from scratch. The lights will even flicker a bit to make it even harder to tell which hat is which when it's spinning. But if Luigi is able to prevail, he gets access to the 12th floor, aka the Spectral King catch. This floor is guarded by Captain Fishhook, a pirate shark with 300 HP in charge of overlooking the final toad painting. This shark will possess the pirate ship in the ocean, only being forced out if Luigi can shoot enough explosive barrels inside his mouth. Though because of his eye patch protecting him from normal stunning, Luigi must wait until his hook gets stuck in the floor before suction is allowed. Johnny Deepend is a Chad water polo player ghost serving as the fitness center's boss on floor 13. You need to use Guigi in the first phase of his battle, but you need to be sneaky because this guy loves shooting water out of his mouth. That leaves regular Luigi with the job of stunning Johnny with the water polo balls so Guigi can make his way to the other side of the pool to drain the water. Once the water is drained and Johnny is stuck in the drain, Luigi just has to suck his sunglasses off his face to open an opportunity for stunning. Only then can Luigi capture this guy in his huge 60 HP stat. Still kind of baffled as to why they made this guy's HP so low when he's a late game boss. <laughs> DJ Phantasma Gloria is a funky little ghost that runs the dance hall on the 14th floor. Luigi can only fight her after beating her squad of dancers that hold onto the elevator button, where Luigi must figure out which of the ghosts in the squad is moving differently to reveal who's actually holding it. Doing this twice will initiate the Gloria fight, where she mainly uses her DJ discs as weapons against Luigi, whether it be throwing some on the ground for zoning or holding two in her hand to do a spin attack. Luigi must use his burst to reveal her eyes under her afro wig to whittle down her 450 HP. A Polter Kitty is an interesting one. Although not a super traditional boss, she's Helen Gravely's pet cat that will occasionally interrupt Luigi's progress by stealing an elevator button. This happens three different times throughout the 
about the adventure and it can't be defeated until after you beat Johnny Deep End. The cat will send you on wild goose chases to different floors where you can only stun it during certain sections of the chase and you'll have to let it sneak up on you in its beast form before you can actually suck its tails in. Now for Helen Gravely, the manager of the haunted hotel and the secondary antagonist to this game who freed King Boo in the first place. She has 600 HP and guards Mario's painting in the master suite on the 15th floor. Helen's fight is pretty much one giant Luigi puzzle. Uh, she'll place a device in the middle of the room that has four different lasers on it that can hurt Luigi, so Luigi has to go underground to turn these lasers off, making the terrain a lot less dangerous for Luigi while fighting the actual Helen. Her only personal attack is diving at Luigi with her mirror, which Luigi can punish her for if she misses this attack. And of course, the big man of the hour, King Boo. Uh, don't worry, I never forget about the goat himself. I, I just figured it'd be best to save him for last since he's the final boss in all three games. The first game has King Boo puppeteering an artificial Bowser body that shoots fire, can suck Luigi inside him, and roll explosive mines at him. Luigi must use those mines to blow Bowser's head off of his head, forcing King Boo out of the body. He has 500 HP in this fight, so catching him in one fell swoop is impossible. Plus, during the suction section, the Bowser head will shoot balls of ice at Luigi to make the job harder. In Dark Moon, King Boo fights Luigi in a paranormal dimension, where he technically has 100 HP, but since he breaks out of the poltergust two times before being finally caught, he might as well have 300. The tech in this fight is to lure King Boo under the shadows of falling spike balls to stun him, but after each breakout, he'll force Luigi to run through a mansion-like hallway which he rolls towards Luigi nonstop. This cycle will repeat with the main arena changing ever so slightly each time, adding piles of sand for example, before the king is defeated for good in this game. As for Luigi's Mansion 3, Luigi has to use bombs to stun him, and he doesn't even have an HP bar this time around. Once stunned, Luigi and Luigi will need to work together to muster the strength to slam King Boo a few times around the roof to inflict damage. King Boo's attack variety is probably the highest in this game than any other game so far. Uh, to name some examples, he can do a tongue swipe attack, shoot fireballs from his crown, clone himself, and conjure strikes of lightning. The final phase forces Luigi to act fast because the king will summon a giant painting frame with the intention of trapping the entire hotel inside. If Luigi can stun him one final time, King Boo will be defeated once and for all. Unless we get a fourth game? Perhaps? <laughs> Well, that just about covers everything about the boss ghosts from the Luigi's Mansion games. Now, let me know in the comments below if there's anything substantial I might have missed, who your favorite boss ghost is, if you have one, a favorite game of the trilogy, what have you. I I'd love to know your thoughts. Of course, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like down below, it helps out a ton. But for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out, take care, bye bye